so my name is Tina Oishi. Uh, my community library is the Port Clements uh, Library. And I also just want to acknowledge that we're on the unceded territory of the Haida Nation. What was your favorite book as a child? My favorite uh, book uh, when I was a child is called Bunaculia. And the people who wrote it were James and Deborah um, Howe. And the book is about a little vampire bunny who uh, sucks vegetables dry. And it's told in the voice of a dog named Harold. And I just love this book because mostly it's about the animals and the people are kind of in the background. Um, so they find this pet bunny at a film that is filming Dracula. So it's very convenient that the bunny is named Bunaculia and he's a little vampire bunny. So that was one of my favorite books as a child and I can still remember it. What was a recent book you read? Okay, so I have two books that I've recently uh, read and I actually have a picture of one. Just gonna show it. So this is A Gentleman in Moscow. And I completely love this book because it was about, um, it was set just after World War II and he was an aristocrat who ended up, um, they imprisoned him in a hotel in Moscow. And I thought it was very fitting because of what was happening with the COVID-19 pandemic and people staying at home. But what I loved about this book is he ends up coming from a very well-off um, background, but he's put in circumstances that leave him basically desolate because he cannot leave the hotel without them executing him. And what ends up happening is he just completely turns his life around and it's just a heartwarming story about like harrowing circumstances and how he turns them around. Um, I don't want to give away the ending because I think it is just amazing and I would recommend it to anyone. Now my second book I wanted to recommend was called The Library Book and conveniently since we're talking about libraries I actually read this book because um, it was very interesting. It was about the Los Angeles library fire that almost completely destroyed their major library. But what I loved about this book is it retells her stories about visiting the library when she was younger and other people's stories of the library. And during the pandemic, one of my things that really made me feel safe when I was going to sleep is I uh, I would think about my library visits when I was a child or when I was like older and it just really brought peace to me and I felt like this book had very similar principles and she, it's interesting as an adult she doesn't visit the library as much but when she starts researching this book she just remembers all her amazing experiences at the library and how that like changed her and made her actually into a writer. So I think it's an amazing book and I'd recommend it to anyone. What other resources do you use at the library? Some of the other resources me and my husband use, we use the internet a lot. We do a lot of research at the library and the librarian herself just, she's a resource in herself. So. I feel like there's a lot of times that I'll have questions about things and I know I can go to her and ask her questions. So um, mainly my big source is books and DVDs. How do you think your life story affects the type of books you're drawn to? It's hard for me to differentiate the two because I feel like my life story influences the type of books I read 
but I also, I am definitely a person, I will admit to this, I am a person who judges a book by its cover. <laughs> so I feel like some stories actually influence my life itself. So um, they encourage me to be a better person. They encourage me to try new things. Um, but in general, like, I think I'm drawn to nature and animals um, because that is what's in my life. I have a dog. I live in a beautiful place. So I'm definitely drawn to stories like that. Um, also, um, I grew up in very rural communities. Um, I'm actually originally from Edmonton, but a lot of my family was from the rural communities out in, in Alberta. So I often feel like I'm drawn to stories about smaller communities or um, stories about just people's lives in general. And I think that's sometimes where um, my life influences the type of books I read. What does the library mean to you? The library is one of the most amazing things in my life. Um, I used to go to the library as a small child and I've, go I've been going to the library um, well, until now. And the first thing I actually went to discover in Port Clements was to see how well their library was stocked. <laughs> because we moved from a place that had a thousands and thousands of books from like the Edmonton Public Library. And I was really curious to see what the Port Clements Library held. And I was not disappointed. I was super excited to realize that Port Clements is attached to the Vancouver Island Regional Library, which means you can get books from like Nanaimo and all these different places and it opens a wealth of resources, which I thought was amazing. But another thing I do when I visit small towns, I'll always visit the libraries now. So I'm very familiar with Prince Rupert's library. I'm very familiar with Smithers and Terrace. And those are actually libraries that, um, even though they're not connected to bigger libraries, you just see what a wealth of resources they bring to the people in that community. So I feel like the library is like completely ingrained in my life. <laughs> and um, I think it always will be. You are known in your communities for celebrating Canadian literature. What are your plans for this year's Giller, considering this state of public health this year? Alex and I, the Alex is our librarian at the Port Clements Library. Um, we actually celebrate the Giller every year uh, uh, with a small little, everyone gets dressed up. It's like a gala event. And we usually have this amazing, a buffet of dinner where everyone brings something and it's an opportunity. We live stream the Giller. Our community is able to do that. And it's a little party to celebrate Canadian literature because I think it's such an important part of like Canada. Now this year is very unusual because we actually haven't even been able to do our book clubs. Um, we our population we have a lot of elderly people and just the social distancing it's not possible in our community to do that but what i have been thinking about is doing online readings of each little book and have a little expert expert of the books and maybe possibly giving out a few books to our book club members we typically have um, gift baskets where we give out gifts so that might be an option but we're not really sure yet. So um, we actually, I know the Giller was live streamed on the short list yesterday. So we're gonna just have to even see what the Giller looks like this year. And what I might throw out to our book club members is that they do more of something at home and maybe take videos or pictures and then we can share it on our Facebook page. And um, I've done the Giller for about 20 years and I never had anyone to celebrate it with. <laughs> so my husband would laugh at me, but I would have wine and a cheese platter and I get all dressed up and I watch the Giller live. So that might just be something that we do more at home this year and then 
share people's stories and what their favorite books were and who they think they were going to vote for. But those were some ideas about what we we're going to do this year. Strong libraries, strong communities. <laughs>